younger. But it's a star! <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to Nerd Java, where you get your daily dose of everything movies, video games, and TV shows. I'm your host, Kenzie Phillips. And I'm Chad Fair. Today we're going to be talking about Hocus Pocus, everybody's favorite movie from our childhood. Well, my childhood. Yes. I wasn't even born when this movie came out. How old were you, Chad? Yeah, we're not going to discuss that. <laughs> so Hocus Pocus was one of those movies that I didn't start watching until I started dating my now wife. Uh, so I didn't see this until I was already well into my 20s. Um, oh, wow. So this, yeah, so it was it was much later. I didn't see this as a childhood movie, whereas right, like, right. this was a movie that she grew up watching. Yeah. Because you're an old man. Yes, exactly. But speaking of, uh, this old man has no Halloween spirit. So here's your Disney ear. Come, come, come. Perfect. There we go. Yay. <laughs> it, it feels very Disney. Like whenever yes. you think of um, the other things that this director did, as far as High School Musical. But yeah, Kenny Ortega definitely has a very specific brand mm -hmm. of movies that he puts out. I think of like Halloween Disney. Mm -hmm. I think of things like Hocus Pocus, like Halloween Town. Yes. It, it falls right in that genre. If you like that type of stuff, this is going to be great for you and the family. Looking back, I would say that the original Hocus Pocus is a tad scarier than the new one. Yeah, there were definitely scary moments yeah. in, at the end of the movie where they leave those two teenagers in the cages. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> messed up. It's messed up, but it's kind of funny. But it, I, it I wish was, they would have tied that into the new one. Yeah. I do too, because I, I always wondered like what happened to those guys. Yeah. Had they made that movie nowadays, yeah. like that wouldn't have been in there. Yeah. You know, so it, it has those like risky moments that movies made in the 90s had that make it yeah. so much more fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a darker movie, but still very kid friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the iconic musical number oh, yeah. that sticks with you your whole life. I love that song. Yeah. I, love I cast how a spell on you. Yeah. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. Yes, yeah, it was very fun. And it was done in a way that it like there's a purpose. Like there right. not only does they're singing put like a spell over the audience. They're at a Halloween party, and Max is trying to warn all of these adults, hey, the Sanderson sisters are back, and everybody just thinks it's a costume, and they're like, oh, now we're gonna break out in song. Everyone's like, oh my god, this is awesome! And like that, it played really well. It didn't mm -hmm. feel like they were just sneaking It didn't feel song. forced. It, it didn't feel yes, forced, right. Which, like, I love musicals, but the songs are definitely People don't forced. randomly break out into song okay, in real life. Well, I do, but... <laughs> But no, I really liked how, how smooth that felt, yeah. and I do like that there was only that one really big musical number. Right. Sarah does sing a song later on luring the children out. But that also makes sense, because that was the spell again. Exactly, right. exactly. And so I, I loved that they didn't go over the top with the musical numbers. These roles for those three actresses of the Sanderson sisters mm. is so different from anything yes. else they do. Yeah, And yeah. that's what I think I thought was really cool about it because you normally would not see uh, Sarah Jessica Parker in, in a kid-friendly movie. Like, I don't no. know that I can think <laughs> of her that. Um, and then Bette Midler is like this, like golden age goddess <laughs> of film. Like mm -hmm. that you're like, wow, I can't believe she's doing a kid's film. Because this movie came out like the year before I was born. So these, this was my first introduction to these actresses. Right. Oh, so yeah. whenever I see them in other things, my first thought is Hocus Pocus. It's like, oh, that's that's where I know her from. That's where I know like Sarah Jessica Parker from. Yeah. Uh, by the way, an awakening for me as a child. I saw her and I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> she was always my favorite Sanderson sister. She's still like gorgeous, and I dare say like this is the best she's ever looked in any any role mm. that she's had. And she's playing a witch, so I love that they didn't go traditional. Well, that's and the other thing. With these big noses yeah. and warts and, like, making them ugly. Like, I love Well, they kind of did with the winter, but, like, with the big old buck teeth. With the buck teeth. Yeah. But I wouldn't say she was ugly. Right. But they didn't go out of their way to do the traditional, like, green skin. Yes, and, with a bunch yeah. of warts. Like, yeah. I feel like there was that whole scene with the bus driver. Oh, yeah. Oh. Or speaking of kid-friendly, there's an adult joke. That the bus driver tells them that I never caught as a kid, and rewatching it last night, I was like, "Oh my god, nasty! How did that get in?" But I need one of those instant ice packs. You girls are giving me a fever. Nineties. So in the nineties, 
but you know she's still attractive enough for that joke to have mm-hmm. been made so you know it's it's cartoony ugly if right. we're gonna say that right and with their hair shapes yeah that's such an iconic thing mm-hmm. as well they don't have you know the traditional witch hats they have yeah. these awesome hair shapes and ones like uh, it looks like an upside down tornado is what I always thought. Yeah, yeah, and, I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah, and so you can see, like I've seen aprons or like cooking wear where it's, it's just, just a... the shape of the hair. Yep. And you know, immediately, it, because it, it's it's such a standalone thing. Right. The witch designs for this movie. And the costumes were just gorgeous. I love, I'm a big, I love cosplay. I love doing costuming. I've done costuming for theater before. And seeing those costumes, I was like, oh my god, yes, there were so many layers, there's so much color, it's just beautiful. Not so much historically accurate. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, I don't think they even attempt to go historically accurate. No. Other than saying, tie, no, tie into the Salem, uh, the Salem Witch Trials. If you're liking our video so far, please give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you know when our beautiful faces are back on YouTube. Yes, and make sure you comment below. Did you grow up watching Hocus mm-hmm. Pocus? Were you introduced to it later in life? Have you never seen it before? And this is the first time you've ever heard of Hocus Pocus. Uh, let us know in the comments below. You said like it's been a long time since you've seen it. Yeah. It, watching it with fresh eyes, does it hold up? I think because it was such a, a standing point for, you know, millennial childhoods, of course we love it. But looking at it as if this movie came out right now, I feel like a lot of people my age would be like, oh, that was kind of lame. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're with a family, mm-hmm. if you have kids, if you're watching it with your parents, everyone would love it. Because it's fun. It definitely has those, like, funny adult jokes. It has, like, some musical numbers that the kids can, like, mm-hmm. really get into. It has, you know, this beautiful fashion and all this that people my age can be like, oh, I really appreciate that. So I think if it's if you're watching it as a family, absolutely it still holds up. There was one thing that I didn't like about it. Oh. Specifically. And it's, because, you know, it's a very cute movie. It's very fun. It's very heartwarming. Yeah. There was one scene where, like, the tower and the the house explodes as they're leaving. Yeah. No explosions. At any other point in the movie. They have electric, like, powers, I guess. It looks like electricity to me. No explosions, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, the, the whole tower in their house just, like, explodes. I want to know how they made a musical number fit in better with a real-life-based movie than an explosion. That takes That's funny. some talent. <laughs> That's funny. If mm-hmm. you're coming in as an adult watching this for the first time, I, I don't know that you'll make it through the movie. Um, yeah. Because it's just not something that, unless you were introduced to younger, that I think you would enjoy. It's it's cheesy. Yeah. It's cheesy in the fun way because I watched it as a kid. Right. That's I guess where it falls with this is like I don't know how well it holds up if you don't watch it regularly. But if right. you watch it regularly, it's because you you have this nostalgia feel for it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you enjoy it. So you go back and watch it, no matter how terrible it is. Right. Um, so I, I kind of feel like that's where this falls. It has grown on me over the years because I've seen it so many times now. Right. Um, and, and it has that kind of like that emotional tie to it of like, oh, this is a family thing. Um, but yeah, I would almost give it like two different ratings, but like as far as like one of like the nostalgia feel. Like, oh yeah, if you, if you watch this as a kid, yes, go back and watch it. But I think for like a new viewer, I don't know that I would rate it super well. Okay. Rating it as someone who had watched it as a kid and this is a nostalgic movie for me. I think I'm going to give it a three and a half. It's very fun. It's very family friendly. It's not too scary for little kids. Right. It's a, it's a nice, solid movie. Nothing yeah. exceptional, but nothing terrible either. I, I would I would tend to agree with you, though. I think that a three and a half is a nice review for this. <laughs> um, it, but it has grown on me over the years. If I were to give this a review back when I first saw it, I'd be like, solid one and a half. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> Because it just doesn't meet my qualifications for Halloween, but it's kind of grown on me over the years. Uh, three and a half. Three, three and a half. half. Three and a half, I, I think. I, I can't bar with a three and a half. So. Perfect. But yeah. So that's what we think, folks. Um, once again, please hit that like and subscribe. Um, and let us know what you think. And also, make sure you check out our next episode, which should be airing the same day as this episode, Ooh, where we're sure. reviewing Hocus Pocus 2. All right, everybody. My name's Chad Fair. I'm Kenzie. See you next time.